It is day two here at the American Heart Association annual meeting in Chicago. I'm here for On the Scene, and with me is Deepak Bhatt. Uh, Deepak knows everything about clinical trials, and we were talking today about probably the hottest trial uh, at this meeting, and that's Improve It. So Deepak, your thoughts on Improve It, an interesting trial, a zetamide and a statin versus a statin alone. What are the outcomes and what are your thoughts more than anything else? It's controversial still. Sure. So I think, uh, first of all, it is the biggest trial of this meeting. It's already gotten a lot of discussion and exposure. Uh, and I thought the trial was very positive. It validated a number of things. It validated the LDL is lower hypothesis, which, you know, there's a lot of epidemiologic data supporting. But in addition to showing that lower is better, that is 50-ish is better than 70-ish, it also validated that a non-statin mediated mechanism of LDL lowering when added to a statin further reduces cardiovascular risk. That's the first time that's been done. Sure, in an older era, non-statin drugs were found to reduce cardiovascular risk, but in the statin era, this is the first trial that's done it. So those are two important contributions. And the third is this particular strategy did reduce cardiovascular risk, so that counts, including a 10 percent or so relative risk reduction in heart events, cardiovascular death and my stroke. Yeah. You know, it's my job to sort of say, wait a minute, Deepak, uh, that's not entirely true, but what he says is entirely true. But the differences are small, Deepak, and you would agree with this. We're talking about 2 percent differences between the uh, statin versus the azetamide plus statin group. And in the long run, you know, 20 versus 22 percent, is that really going to make a difference on how people treat patients that have hypercholesterolemia? I think the answer is yes. I, I think, think so it should. Uh, Ezetimide is still a good drug. It does lower cholesterol. The safety profile looked great too, I'll, I'll mention. No right. cancer signals. Some yeah. had worried about that. Yeah. Nothing there. Yeah. So very reassuring in terms of the safety as well. Yeah, it's a statistical question, isn't it? Is 2% worth adding a drug, you know, yet another drug for somebody to buy? And I think that still boils down to the thought about the individual patient and making that decision. Sure, and it does go generic in a couple of years as well, so even the cost part of that equation will be uh, substantially reduced. So to me, I think for doctors who are trying to individualize patient care, it really does validate that approach of trying to go lower with the LDL cholesterol. Yeah. And the good news is lower is better. There's no question about that. It clearly shows that. And the difference is 70 to 50, so you know, it's not a bad diff uh, reduction. That's right. Okay, let's move on. The aspirin trial. The aspirin sure. and the elderly trial. An interesting trial. I happen to be an aspirin supporter and a buff and think that it is a good thing to take, but uh, uh, this trial doesn't show a lot of difference, does it? No, and it's probably good that we're paired up because I'm actually a bit skeptical of the role of aspirin in primary prevention. Again, I think it might be useful for individual patients, but as a blanket recommendation, I don't actually recommend it. And this trial supports a number of other similar trials that have not shown an overwhelming benefit for aspirin in primary prevention. It's true. Uh, there is no overall difference, but there are some signals inside of the data. When sure. you look at the data, uh, TIA is, seems to be reduced, and right. uh, I guess it is non-fatal myocardial infarction is the other. Right. So aspirin, you know, in a very short term, seems to have some signals that maybe it is better. Remember uh, the doctor's health trial or right. way back in study. the 80s yes. uh, that showed there was a reduction in events, but it wasn't a huge reduction. It just made you have a little less reduction. Uh, Non-fatal MI again, yeah. yeah. Exactly, so I think, again, we're back to, you know, you takes your money and pays your choice, or whatever it is, maybe pays your money and takes your choice. Well, I think it's a matter of looking, you know, what's the patient's bleeding risk, their GI bleeding risk, just how high is their ischemic risk, and for some patients, I think it's reasonable uh, to consider aspirin in primary prevention, but there are ongoing trials, a number of them, right. so it's not an unreasonable thing to wait and see what those trials do before broadly saying everybody in a certain age range should be on aspirin. That's right. There are three trials pending, one in uh, extremely elderly patients, one in diabetes, and one in patients with very high risk uh, cardiovascular uh, abnormalities. So we'll see what those trials tell us in another year or two, and maybe that'll help us make that decision. Agree. Let me just say one quick word about a trial that's for those people who like to do CTs for screening. Uh, there is a trial in diabetics uh, where CTs are done for screening to see if it will change outcomes in coronary disease absolutely no difference in outcomes. So right. for all of you folks out there that love to screen with CTs, particularly in diabetics, at least from this trial, you're wasting your time.
And money. <laughs> and money. Thanks, Deepak. Thank you. 